What the heck happened to real estate in 2021? What's going to happen in 2022? Will there be a correction? What the heck is going on, Paul Hilly? Those are all great questions, and I'm going to help you answer in this video. Hi, I'm Paul Haley, Toronto realtor, investor, educator, and speaker. And Treb just released the numbers for 2021. So there was a record number of sales of almost 122,000 units last year, uh, which beat 2020 by 28%. And it was even 7.7 .7 higher than the last most recent big year, which was 2016. So new listings were up only 6.2% which is a lot less than sales were up to 28%, which has meant that we are at the lowest level of housing inventory in the city of Toronto that we've ever had uh, around between 0.8 and 0.9 uh, months of inventory. And the result of those extremely tight market conditions is we are at an all-time high of almost $1.1 million. Congratulations, Toronto. And interestingly, you know, 2021 saw the resurgence of sales within the core of Toronto, which was up significantly higher than was in the outskirts of the 905s, as we like to call it. So what the heck happened? How did we get here? So first of all, let's look at the fundamentals, both monetary policy interest rates, and also, you know, just real estate in Toronto, supply and demand. Let's talk about those. And then we can go on and we can talk about what we think is going to happen for 2022. So we all understand <laughs> that, you know, the government's, um, you know, lowering of interest rates and, you know, putting billions of dollars of uh, basically mortgage money out there uh, through uh, quantitative easing, you know, really, let's say, let the real estate horse out of the barn. It was already out of the barn, but, it, you know, it definitely made it uh, worse <laughs> in terms of prices. Uh, and we know that, you know, investors or people buying a second home, you know, made up more of a percentage of that than, than we typically see, mainly because they were able to leverage the capital in their existing home to go and buy another home at ridiculously low interest rates. But now that we're seeing inflation, the, you know, so the theory goes, the Bank of Canada is going to raise the interest rates, it's going to cause the market to cool down, and everything's going to be okay, right? I don't know if that's true. <laughs> Let's talk about it. So inflation, the problem is inflation isn't caused by an overheating economy. Inflation is caused by, you know, supply problems, really. Uh, and, you know, we're not at full employment right now. So, you know, that's, that's a problem in terms of raising interest rates when you still want to incentivize growth. So further <laughs> situations, further waves and, you know, other maybe potentially environmental situations are going to cause uh, scenarios where the Bank of Canada is going to have to step in and provide some liquidity. And, you know, the, the we can't raise interest rates too much because, you know, business has basically been boring to kind of keep the lights on. <laughs> and, you know, and the government has been boring to keep the lights on. So if we raise interest rates too much, you know, it's going to it's gonna slow all that down at a time when we actually need growth, right? Dare we say stagflation. That could happen, right? That's where you have a rising interest rates and an economy that's sh shrinking. If you're looking for some heavy bedtime reading, <laughs> I invite you to read the updated uh, Bank of Canada policy. Uh, you will note that the wording, it's very flexible. Their words, not our, not mine. Uh, you know, so they're looking at more than just inflation now, right? It's inflation, it's employment, and it's you know, anything that's happening in the economy where they could be invited to stimulate, right? So <laughs> further waves, disasters, etc. What I think this all means is, you know, we're going to see negative interest rates for a fairly long period of time. So negative interest rates are when your inflation is actually higher than the cost of borrowing which means the money you're borrowing is worth less and less each and every year. So the real estate market, the Toronto real estate market is gonna to continue to be driven by increasing demand 
and supply that just isn't keeping up. So population growth is 3.2% forecast to be that or a little bit higher. Uh, employment growth is 3.4%. Wage growth is 3.8%. But housing supply growth is only 2.4%. So, you know, there's a percentage gap between how many people are going to be moving to the city of Toronto and how many houses we're going to build for them. It's not complicated math. That adds up to anywhere between 15 and 20,000 housing units per year, each and every year for the next 10 years. That is what I mean by a lack of supply. So what the heck is gonna happen in 2022? So, you know, most pundits are predicting, uh, you know, some type of correction in the Canadian real estate market, right? And that's because, you know, markets with the exception of Toronto, Vancouver, maybe Montreal, maybe Calgary, and actually maybe Halifax, <laughs> Uh, you know, aren't, aren't, don't have that supply deficit. So, you know, their prices are up 30, 40% on no population growth, you know, no wage growth and no supply issues. Doesn't take a genius to figure out that there's probably going to see a correction there. But we're talking about Toronto real estate and, you know, pundits are very careful to basically kind of say, oh, well, we're going to see price growth around in the 10% region. 11% depends who you read, right? But the truth is, nobody knows, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, for sure, we're still gonna have this supply problem. And right now, you know, there just are no houses to buy. And the ones that are available are seeing, you know, multiple offers and are going, you know, way over asking. So eventually, real estate kind of tends to go like in waves. I mean, it's always going up, but you know, you just have this these periods of, of short supply and you'll see price increases and then it'll slow down and you know more supply will hit the market it, it sort of it's fairly cyclical like that so you know we're expecting to see more supply hit the market in the spring uh you know and hopefully uh prices aren't going to be as runaway as they were in 2021 so there is a lot of talk uh and potential policy around housing supply you know certainly the province of ontario is increasing their housing supply unfortunately just not fast enough in the city of toronto you know and while there's a lot of talk you know no city that i've know of has ever out supplied themselves out of a situation like this uh and you know certainly now with costs spiraling out of control building costs uh you know taxes and even just you know building requirements are are not getting cheaper uh, you know, I don't see us really doing enough or really anything to make a dent in that supply problem. As we talked about, and you know, investors were, uh, you know, one of the primary drivers of sales growth in the last year. Uh, you know, and that's because they could borrow against equity in that one property or multiple properties and buy more, right? And take advantage of what I call free money. <laughs> Um, you know, and there is some some talk of public policy aimed at, you know, reducing that a little bit. So either by changing the mortgage rules for a second property or for investors uh, or even different levels of taxation. You know, I, and I think that's very short sighted. And I think it's short sighted, you know, and it's a little punitive because, you know, listen, the small investors are the one that, ones that have created the bulk of rental supply in the last 30 to 40 to 50 years. So, you know, while we're sort of penalizing them saying, oh, you're, you're buying houses, we're still creating housing units, right? Uh, and, you know, truthfully, the small residential per purchase, like, you know, buying a house, turning it into a triplex, duplex, adding a laneway suite, you know, those are, that's really the last bastion of investment for a small investor because that's hard to do at scale, right? Like big builders would need to buy hundreds of those things to kind of make it effective for them. You know, and really it's just gonna drive more money in the pocket of the big builders and we're gonna be incentivized to pick these big buildings, fill them with tenants where, you know, we could, you know, infill communities. I, I just think it's, it's a short-sighted policy if that's the direction we, we choose to go. So what's the truth? You know, the truth is, 
if you're hoping for a correction before you, you know, buy a condo, you know, upgrade to a house or, you know, buy your first investment property, hoping is not a plan. It's, <laughs> it's, it's really not. And, you know, we've helped a lot of people this past year, you know, do that very thing. Buy the first condo, buy the first investment property, buy a house, you know, renovate any of those projects, right? So it's still doable and it just takes time and it takes effort and it takes guidance, right? So, you know, if you're thinking of doing that, I'd say do it before it's too late, you know, and we're here to help. So, you know, whatever you need, we can be your guides. We can help you along this journey to help you take the next step. So I hope you found that hugely helpful. If you have any questions, if you want to talk real estate, shoot us an email, info at thinkto.ca. Please like this video and please subscribe to this channel so we'll know to make more of this amazing content. Talk soon.